Welcome to a next guide. This is going to be a duo next guide. So if you're interested in that, then I'm going to guess you are in the right place, hopefully. So we're going to be starting off. I'm going to be using some rune light plugins. So I'm just going to quickly show you which ones we're going to be using for the guide and then we will get onto it. So what we're going to do, we're going to go on rune light plugin up and download radius markers. And then these are all the current settings I've got for the radius markers. So if you want to copy them, feel free so these are the ones we're going to be using obviously for the guide so if you want to copy them exactly how they are then do that so next we're going to open it on here so press radius matters and then you're going to click the plus on the top here and that should add a new little and um, whatever it is that you can edit so these ones are the ones i've got for next so you can also rename them so this bottom one here you're going to put the NPC ID, which is next, so 11278, you need that in. And then we're going to change it to magic on this little drop down menu and put it as number six. The color of mine in the video is red, so I'm going to be referring to it as that. And then you want to add another one and make that the same NPC ID, but this is going to be number 10 and it's going to be melee. And then the color on this is going to be blue. And this will just be the maximum range for next and into the video you will see what I mean by that. So that is the radius markers we're going to be using in the video. Next thing is tile indicators. So if you don't use these, I'd highly recommend. They are very, very useful. So these are the settings I've got on so far. I'm going to guess most of you know how these work, but copy them from the description, right click on the rune light map and then just import tile markers and I'll post them all in there. So we're going to be using NPC indicators here. So if you just type in next on there and maybe the blood reavers totally up to you. So that is the last thing we're going to use. So for this, we're going to be going with this setup. So full Masori. Also, if you don't have Masori, I would bring rather a Slayer Helm or the Nezi totally up to you with obviously the face guard and then Carol's top and bottom. That's kind of what I was using. I only got Masori the other day, but this is going to be your setup. So Barrow's Gloves, don't bring Ferocious unless you're really comfortable, but I'd definitely just bring the Barrow's. Minimal switches, a lot better. Make sure you're bringing Thralls. I'm bringing an Ancient item, so if you've got Ancient Vambraces or Zarites, whatever they're called, bring them. Blood Fury, obviously Avernic. Spectral I used to bring, but I'd rather just bring the Avernic now. And then this is going to be the Potions. 13 Brews, 7 Restores, a Range Pot two combats so that is the setup for this and then let's get on to the kill right so whenever you're ready we're gonna get the pre pots out and then we're gonna pop up so i'll just grab them one take so we're gonna grab this the pre pots so you're gonna drink these totally up to you whether you want to drink the range pot but i just do anyway i mean they're so cheap why not and then you're gonna grab the rest brews so we got 13 brews, 7 restores, 2 super combats and a range pot. So starting the kill off, I'm going to stand here. I usually, Dan stands on the other side as you can see over there. I'm going to stand here. I normally wait for the boss to spawn and then I drop 2 brews underneath me. And then we're going to pick these up a little bit later on, on the first phase. So basically just stand here, get ready, sort whatever you need to out, invent or whatever. And then we're just going to wait on the boss spawning, basically. Right, so the boss spawns. So whenever we're ready, drop two of the brews and we're going to run over to the middle. I don't know why I always go on these tiles here. But we're going to start off pre mage, get the thrall up and then just get ready. So we're going to attack the boss. Whenever the boss is hitting you, you're going to pray melee and you're going to walk under it. So as you can see here, I'm going to pray melee. And then as she goes to hit us, we're just going to walk back under it. Whenever she's not on you, you're going to pray magic. And then you're just going to carry on hitting. So totally up to you if you want to get all your specs off now. Why not? As well, the blood fury might get a nice heal in there. But as you can see, she's back on me. So pray melee. And then you want to get her so you're basically tanking one-to-one -one hit. So you hit her, she hits you once rather than because she will attack faster. So that is the start of that phase. So 
So same again, pray melee when the boss is hitting you. And you're just going to keep walking under as she goes to hit. Whenever she's not on you, you got to pray mage and just carry on attacking. Like I say, if you want to get your specs off, that is totally up to you. When she says there is, as you can see there, she will charge towards you. You need to run to one of the other sides. Don't run through her. Usually run left or run right. Totally up to you. I mean, I'm terrible at it, so it was quite lucky that I dodged that one. However, she will turn towards you, and if she does turn towards you, you are going to have to run. Exactly like I just did there. And you should dodge that attack. Other than that, the first phase is pretty easy. That is the only attack really you've got to watch out for. So right, we're going to slow it down. So in a second here, when next is there is, you're going to run to one of these blue tiles or squares, whatever, either side. And then that way you will dodge that attack. If you do get hit by that attack, you'll probably end up getting hit around maybe a 50. So just bear that in mind. Try and avoid it if you can. Right, so we're going to run over to the pillar here, or the minion. So you're going to try and have a look, see who Nex is on. So as you can see, she's on me. Now she's swapped to Dan. So you're going to stay as close as you can to this blue line. If you can and Nex isn't on you, you're going to run out like this. But as you can see, she's running over to me. So as long as you're within one or two tiles from this blue line, you shouldn't take too much damage. Any closer than that, and you probably will get hit, but preferably try and be out of the blue line. So another example here, so next is on Dan, as you can see, I'm stood right on the blue line. As well, the minions attacking me, so we're going to stand out of range here. And then the boss has just moved, so since we're stood on that very, very last tile there, we aren't taking too much damage, but Nex has been a nightmare here. So we're going to run under her. You don't have to run under her, but you're just going to be tanking damage basically. So I'm trying to reset her here, as you can see. So just trying to attack the minion while I'm trying to reset Nex. And as you can see there, we just reset her. So this is going to be Nex shadow phase. All right, so once the minion's dead, you're going to run back over to here where your blues are and you're going to pray range. And then you're basically just going to stand here and attack next while you're in range. When she spawns the shadow, this is how you're meant to do it. So, spawns it there. We're going to walk one forward. Even though she's not attacking us, it still works out. And she, even if she was, she wouldn't drag forward. So, just bear that in mind. Right, so, when she runs towards us here, we're going to walk two tiles forward. So, as you can see there... When we're right underneath her, she's going to teleport back to the middle. So that is exactly what you want. If she doesn't do that, try and run away and obviously just go max range. You can do this from anywhere. It doesn't have to be these tiles, but as you can see, stand on that third tile there. So a third tile forward and then she'll teleport back. So in slow motion, we're going to show you another example. So keep attacking her. So we've got four tiles marked here. We're going to run to that third one forward. And then that way, Nex will run like right underneath you. And then she'll teleport back to the middle. And then you're going to run obviously back to the max distance. So as you can see here, perfect. And then she's back on Dan. And then in a second, she's going to turn around, run towards us again. You can't really predict it. It's pretty... Um, pretty random like this so we're gonna run back forward so we're right underneath her there and then she teleported back perfectly in the middle so you always want to preferably in the middle especially at these points on shadow so if you mess up like this right so you're gonna try and run away if she is embraced darkness you're gonna take a lot of damage so just try and run away just keep running so I thought she might teleport there. As you can see, she teleported over to Dan. So Dan's going to try and get a mid. So there you go. She's back in the middle. So we're going to run away. So you don't have to go where we dropped the bruise at the start. You can go either side like this. So then we're going to run back to that middle tile there. So ignore this footage the tile markers, I did end up messing up. I was trying to actually get these marked for the video. So they are in the right place now. So the ones that I've posted in the description are the right ones. So as you can see here, 
that third tile again and then she will teleport so dodge the shadow walk forward and then back on the boss so this should be the shadow phase done pretty much you're just going to do this the whole time if she runs towards you and you mess up then just run somewhere else and continue attacking her So on this part, so when you come into the end of shadow phase and you're going on to the minion, you're going to try and reset the boss back to the middle. It doesn't matter if you don't. And then we're going to run over and obviously start attacking the minion. So attacking the minion, I'm at tanking at the moment. So I'm going to stand in the blue uh, radius. Dan is going to stand as close as he can to the end of the radius. So here I'm going to try and reset the boss. So as you can see, she just mugged us off. <laughs> so we're going to run away. So she's on Dan at the moment and she turned back on me. So bear in mind, Dan's still tanking the minion. So I'm going to try and lure the boss as far away as possible. And at least that way Dan can DPS the minion. So I'm going to run over here. So if she stayed still, which sometimes she does, I can stand right at the end here and tank the boss. And Dan's still got the minion. So this is an example of when Nex has been a bit of a nightmare. So we're coming to the end of the minion. She literally won't leave us alone. So I'm just going to try and reset her like that. I'm praying mage and I'm standing near the edge, but I'm not tanking much damage because I'm stood right at the edge, if that makes sense. So in this scenario, I'm just tanking the minion. I'm going to keep running in, hitting the minion. If you're close like this, you may as well just finish the minion. So... Right, so reset next here. So look at who she's attacking. So at the moment she's attacking me. The minion is on Dan. So Dan is going to stand out of Nex's radius and pray mage. Right, so as you can see here, Nex turned on Dan. But because he stood where he is on the blue line, she's not going to hit him much. She only hits like ones and stuff like that. So you can sit and tank Nex even if you pray mage as long as you're right at the radius. Right, so another example of this. So she's on Dan at the moment. So we're going to get her down, try and reset her if possible. So as you can see, I messed up here. But if I keep walking under her like this, she might reset. So there you go, perfect. So right, we need to get on the minion here. I kind of forgot, I can't lie. <laughs> so I was just studying until Dan told me. Right, so she's on me, so I'm going to try and reset her again. So when she keeps running towards you, keep trying to reset her. Sometimes you will mess up, it is what it is, but I think I do mess up here. Yeah, there we go. So, what I wouldn't recommend is doing this. So, don't stand under her when she's doing the darkness thing. But luckily, we get the reset here. So, then again, back to the blue line. Stand and tank. So, the minion is on me, so I'm going to pray mage. And obviously, next here is on Dan. So, as long as you're at max distance, I'm going to say this the whole fight. You won't tank much damage at all, so there you can see she only hit me a 1. There's a 7. Obviously a 0. So I'm going to stand here, and obviously when she starts running over here, this is where the problems occur. So, yep, yeah, as you can see that I got hit. So we're going to keep running max distance, just tank the minion. If you're really close to the minion dying, you may as well kill it, so. Right, so, get the boss in the middle like this. Right, so the boss is on me. Then again, Dan's tanking the minion. So I'm going to stand here and tank the boss. Dan's going to stand out of range. And then that way, he's only getting hit a small amount. So I'm going to try and reset the boss again. There you go, perfect. This minion will die quite quick, as they normally do. But obviously, you've just got to concentrate more on the boss than the minion, you know what I mean? So that was kind of a perfect example of, I'd say, killing the minion. This phase is going to be Nexus Blood phase. Right, so when you're done with Shadow phase, you're going to run over and start attacking the boss. On this phase, the boss will give you some sort of... You'll highlight red, basically. When you highlight red, this is what we've got this big square marked for. So, dump all your specs. She will spawn siphons, and she will obviously do the blood attack. So, kill the siphon, as you can see here, as soon as possible. And then she will do a blood attack, so one of us will be highlighted red. So we're going to run any tile at all outside of that big red square we've got marked. 
so bear with it one second so as you can see here so we're going to run out of the red square and then she's going to fire the blood attack and that way as you can see here she only hit me a one so you're going to do that every time so whenever she does that just make sure you run out of that radius marker if you didn't have these radius markers it'd be really awkward so i would recommend obviously trying to do them so then again back on the siphon and as you can see your blood phase is basically nearly done already we're nearly on the minion so then get back on the boss obviously chuck your thralls up if needed and then we're just going to keep attacking her so then again we're going to run out of radius so another example so get on the boss keep attacking the boss this is when she's in the middle which we normally try and reset her back in, in the middle just for convenience you can use the altar so as you can see here she's attacking dan but the blood reaver is on me so we're going to kill that first so if nex isn't on you and the minions aren't here then you can actually run to the altar and use it in between attacks which is nice so that is usually what we do we'll dump all our specs and then start attacking the boss so as you can see here she's on dan so i'm going to run over here obviously get my spec back dan's going to run out of the red square and then he didn't get hit either and then usually what we'll do we'll dump all our specs here so that's kind of why we save the altar until we've used specs and obviously make sure you get these blood reavers they're probably the worst things so kill the blood reaver dan's obviously gone to the altar why nex is attacking me t-bar obviously hits pretty um pretty consistent on these things so right so here usually we only get a couple of siphons and then the boss is pretty much phased already so we can run to the minion so there you go dan's run out of the square run back in he gets hit at 15 but you know that could just be normal boss attacks so if you don't run out and you get hit by blood you probably will get hit something massive so definitely worth so just about a phase here and obviously a minion spawn so just remember to kill those things right third example right so we're gonna get on the boss here dan's gonna run out that big red square there and then we're just gonna keep attacking the boss so dump all your specs whenever she's on you by the way walk under like this as usual and then she's back on to dan so look for the minion <laughs> i don't actually know what happened here it literally disappeared we were both looking around for ages like yeah i've never seen that happen before but <laughs> drop, drop it in the comments if you have to right so back on the boss so just keep attacking her right so as you can see here i didn't realize i was actually blood so i'm gonna get whacked yep a 40. right so get on the blood minion in the corner right so dan's gonna start killing the blood reaver so i'm also gonna help him out here as you can see here, we nearly planked to the boss. <laughs> Feels bad. Right, so Blood Reaver's dead. So the boss is on me, and the minion is on Dan. We're already out of the red square here, so it doesn't really matter about running away from that blood. So we're just going to stand here and tank. So this is probably perfect case scenario. So the boss is on me, the minion in the corner is on Dan. And then, obviously, just keep killing it. So the Blood Reaver there is on me as well, but it doesn't really matter. So, because Dan stood where he is, so he's obviously right next to that blue square. He doesn't need to move anywhere, because even if the boss is on him, he's going to take as minimal damage as possible. So killing the Blood Minion. You're going to try and always stay max distance. So as you can see, the Minion is on me, and the boss is also on Dan. But then the, uh, the boss starts running over here, so... If you want, if you're just at the start of the minion, definitely kill the cypher. And as well, try and reset the boss. So as you can see, Dan's done a good job resetting the boss. So I'm going to stay outside the blue tile marker, or the blue square, which we have highlighted. So the minion is on me. I mean... So as you can see, the blood minion is on me. The reaver's on Dan, and the boss is on Dan. So when next spawns you red, because you're already out of that red square you don't actually need to do anything so you basically just stand there 
When she starts to run over like this, it is best to try and walk under and reset her. As you can see, Dan done a good job there as well. And that is pretty much this minion dead. So when you come in to the point where you've got it to 1360 health, so the boss, you're going to run over to the minion. So you're going to obviously check who the, uh, the boss is on. So as you can see, they're both on Dan. And there you go, the boss has turned on me. So Dan is tanking the minion, I'm tanking the boss. As you can see here, he did actually get hit by the blood, which is a bit of a feels bad. So it's a bit annoying when the boss is in this scenario because Dan is obviously trying to kill the minion and he's getting hit a lot. So best thing to do, reset the boss like that. All right, so he's going to stand out of distance and I'm going to stand one tile in. Ignore the cypher as well, you know, if you're, the minion's pretty close to dying, you may as well just ignore it and tank it. The quicker you get this phase done, basically the less you're going to get hit, so... And then that is pretty much the minion dead, there you go. Right, so, when you get on the blood minion, so as you can see, the blood minion is on me, and the boss is also on me. So that thing is walking off, so we're going to try and ignore that. If the minion is on you, like the blood reaver then obviously kill it if the minion in the corner is around half health you may as well leave the blood reaver and just kill this so as you can see here i don't actually need to go anywhere because i'm already out of that red square so you're just going to tank the boss i am taking a lot of damage here but it doesn't really matter cause, you know wh when you're a little bit more comfortable you can um probably have enough bruise as well so kill the minion in the corner just obviously drink the bruise when needed if you do want to take less damage then try and get the boss to swap over but as you can see here reset the boss and then the minion is basically dead so here we're going to run straight at the corner so the boss is attacking me and the minion is also attacking me so i'm just going to stand here and tank at the moment if you do start taking too much damage, then obviously do run. But as you can see, the Blood Reaver, you can leave that exactly where it is. If it's not attacking you then and not hitting the boss or anything, then just leave it. It's just extra damage you don't need. So you can see here, I'm already out of the radius. So we're just going to stand and tank the Blood Attack and stay on the minion. So when the boss runs towards you like this, try and reset her. As you can see there, perfect. So the minion's on Dan here. So I'm taking the boss, Dan's got the minion. This phase is going to be Nexus Ice Phase. Right, so at the start of this, the boss is going to throw that Prison of Ice attack. So all you're going to do is click on it and get your teammate out of it. Usually when you're running in, she always will do that attack. So we're going to slow it down here. So she'll say die now in a Prison of Ice and she's going to pick a random player. So usually me and Dan both run separate ways and then you basically just click on it and that'll free him. She's going to do this throughout this phase so whenever she does that we stand on separate sides like this and then that way she'll only get one of us in the prison. The next attack she's going to do is this contain this so you're going to walk one tile back and then you're going to range her. Normally you can get between two and three hits in on, on the, the range and then you go back to melee her. So then again, we're going to slow this attack down. So she will say contain this. As you can see, I think it's right now. So then, because we're in melee distance, we're going to walk one back from melee distance. And then we're going to range her. So put your rigor on. Get normally between two and three T-bows, depending how fast you are. So that is number two. And then we're going to get one more in. Swap to your melee and then get back hitting her like this. So they're the main two attacks she will do. So the rest of it, as you can see, obviously free Dan. When, she, when the boss is attacking you on this phase, you're gonna keep walking under her. So as you can see here, walk under as she goes to hit me, walk under again. She'll swap on Dan. Usually Dan just stands there and tanks it to be fair, but <laughs> I've been trying to convince him to walk under. So contain this, so swap to your T-Bow, attack her again, normally get between 2 and 3 in. So this is the third hit, so there you go, swap to a Fang again. Right, I'm going to walk under, get the Fang out, 
she's swapped again. And that is pretty much this phase done, so make sure you get your prison of ice and <laughs> get that sorted. There you go, perfect. And they're phased. So, this part you're going to get on the minion. Then again, stand near the blue line. You also want to stay quite close apart if you possibly can, but obviously not like right together. And then that way, if one of you gets frozen like this, at least the other one is quite nearby. If you're too far away, then obviously you will get hit. But we normally try and reset the boss here. And then that way she'll obviously hit us a little bit less and stay like out of range. So... Dan is tanking the minion, so he stood near the blue line, and I'm going to try and reset the boss again. So hopefully she does. Come on next, run. Alright, maybe not. Right, when you're coming on to the end here, you don't want to reset her. Right, so we're going to get on the minion here. As you can see, the minion is on Dan, and the boss is also on Dan. We're going to try and stay kind of relatively close together and then that way at least if she freezes one of us, we are close by. Sometimes you can get frozen, both of you at the same time. And obviously one of you is going to be trapped so you will get hit a lot. So if possible like that, try and reset her. When you're coming towards the end of the minion though, you don't want to reset her because you're going to be as close as you can or as you're going to get whacked. So as you can see here, yeah, free whoever it is from the prison of ice. And then you're going to run, get back on the minion. Right, so here, I don't want to reset the boss. So I'm going to stay right next to the boss. Obviously, walk out of melee range if, if you need. But there, that is done. Right, so going on the last phase here, we're going to start meleeing it. Right, so she, you've got to watch out here. She's going to do an attack where overhead she basically prays melee. So when she does that, don't melee her. Otherwise, it's basically going to deal damage to you instead. So, any second now she's going to do it, so I'm going to swap to range here. And then as you can see there, she's going to do that attack. If you do end up hitting her, whatever you hit will recoil back to you. I think it might be all the damage, I'm not too sure though, but basically whatever you do, just don't hit her on this. If you do end up hitting her, like I say, she's just going to deal that damage back to you, so you will end up just getting smacked. So I'm going to show you the full time clip here. So obviously get your pretty melee up. We're going to hit her a few times like this. And then when she's going to do that attack, you can usually guess it as well. So there you go. Get your T-bone, get a few T-bones in and then just carry on the kill like normal. So when she turns on you like this, you're going to pray melee and you're just going to walk under her, get your fang back out. Usually as well, you will get the timing down in the end, but Usually every four attacks, she will end up changing who she's attacking. So she's hit down once there. We've got two in. And then that was number three. Obviously make sure you range there. And then she should turn on me right now. There you go. So this is number two. And then eat up. So three. And then number four. So she should turn on Dan right about now. There you go. So after a while, you will get the timing down on this. It did take us a little while, but if you are in a Discord together, I'd recommend one person try counting. That's kind of what we did at first. It was normally me counting, and then after a while, you kind of just get the hang of it, and you both start doing it. So like I say, just whatever you do, don't end up melee on this attack. Just get your range out. Start ranging. And then by the time you know it, the kill should be pretty much over. So get your melee back on when you can. Obviously, make sure you eat up, you don't want to sit low health, because this phase does actually hit you quite hard. So as you see, pretty mage, you know, I should be pretty melee, <laughs> but it's okay, it's dead anyway. And then we get nothing. Right, so, this is bad case scenario. So she throws an ice, um, whatever it is, prison of ice at me. But she ends up freezing Dan at the same time. So this doesn't happen too often. However, it also could happen. So as you can see, we were quite close together as well. So we thought we were fine. And then she throws this prisoner of ice at me. But as you can see, she throws a mage attack and freezes Dan. So what I'm going to do straight away, I'm going to pray uh, range. 
And then that way it should negate most of the damage. So you get hit a 34. If you don't do that, you literally get smacked like really hard. I can't remember what I got hit yesterday, but it was, yeah, it was a lot worse than a 34. I think it was like a 70 or whatever it was. Somewhat ridiculous. So just make sure. So the full time clip here. So real speed. So she does that. Dan lets me know he can't get me. So I'm going to pray range straight away. Luckily, next hit to zero as well. So it kind of all works out in the end. Right, so on this bit, we're just going to carry on. Get your range out. Obviously, hit next. Right, so count your attacks. So that is one. That is about two. This is number three. And then this is about four. And then she should turn right about now. There you go. So that, that is number two attack. Number three. And then she should turn right about now. There you go. Right, now you're going to get your range out any second, as you can see here. Walk under her still. And then you're going to carry on ranging her. Sometimes you do misclick. It is better running under the boss like this. And then she turns on Dan, so I'm going to pray mage again. And then this is about number three. And then this should be four, so she should melee me right now. There you go. So then this is about number two. And then number three. And then four. So she should turn on the very next hit. Or maybe not. Turn now. There you go. So it's not exact. I mean, there probably is a good timing for it. But I usually go off the reference of about you attacking her roughly four times. Obviously, that kind of depends as well. Because if you are potting and stuff, then if you lose ticks, you know, you've kind of got to work it around that. But basically, whenever she's on you on this phase, you're going to pray melee. Just keep walking under as she goes to attack you. And then when she's not on you, you're going to pray mage. So any second now, we're going to get our range on. And she should put that attack up any second. Even if you do it a little bit early like I did here, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're not getting hit. Because you're going to use a lot of bruise in this phase. So as you can see though with us... You know, we've kind of got the technique down a little bit. So we've got loads of bruise for this phase. So another thing, you can also trade. If you get the timing right, <clears throat> she will end up pausing and you can get a trade off. So sometimes if I've got loads of bruise, me and Dan will end up chutting each other a brew on this phase. So, and that is the end of the kill. Hopefully you did all enjoy this video and hopefully you did find it useful. I mean, feel free to leave a like and a sub. I would much appreciate it. It did take me like, I can't like, it took me forever to make this guide. But I didn't really see many duo next guides on YouTube, so I thought I'd try and make one. So yeah, if it is useful, you know, feel free to leave me some feedback. If there's any questions as well, do leave them down below in the comments and I will get back to you all. Other than that, I wish you all luck. You can rather do this with range, by the way, or the melee method, but the range will work exactly the same. Apart from, obviously, you're not going to be stood, like, right next to next, doing the fang way. But you can stand, like, one square back. But other than that, yeah, best of luck, and I will see you in the next one. Good luck.